so we we um Ray had a consult with our doctors um uh, yesterday evening and he's gonna have surgery repair a, a torn ligament in his toe and that's gonna put him out for the year we I you know I heard for Ray um he's really he's battled through just some nicks all season and um you know I'm, I'm anxious for him to obviously be a part of of uh this team one and continue to help us and in, in, in the manner he can um and you know he's a smart player so he'll be like another coach on the field so we heard for Ray but excited for the guys that uh, will get opportunities too obviously Rocco and Patrick have been uh, featured in our offense at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, Jay Ziegler will also get some some chances as well. So uh, opportunity for those guys. We heard for Ray, uh, but we're also excited to have him part of our team and help us move forward. Teresa, go ahead. Clark, as you prepare for this Georgia defense, uh, you, your offense has shown some improvement from the opener, but when you as you prepare for Georgia, what what's the thought? I mean, how do you look at trying to attack this? So you've got your run game going, but you know that you look at this defense; they're second in the league, and uh, that you know they're just they're looking pretty impressive, even for an SEC defense. As a former defensive coordinator, what? Are well, uh, let me start, Teresa, by wishing you a happy belated birthday. I'm sorry this wasn't yesterday, and we could have uh, celebrated together. Um, Thank you. you. Know, yeah, the. Uh, Look, first of all, I've got a ton of respect for for um, Georgia's defense or staff. They do a great job. Um, I've been familiar with that operation. You know, we we spent some time with them uh, when I was when I was at Notre Dame, just collaborating, sharing thoughts. They do a, they do a great job. The defense is um, it, it, it's uh, it's about creating negative plays. They, they do they do uh, well controlling the line of scrimmage. They play aggressively. Um, and um, they're multiple in their coverage concepts. And so um, there are challenges, but there are also opportunities. And I think, you know, finding ways to neutralize their front, finding ways to, again, separate uh, the first level with the second level um, and trying to design some space for, for us to get the ball to playmakers will all be a part of the formula. Um, we also need to worry uh, in design about the defense, but really worry and execution more about ourselves. And so I'm interested in seeing the Vanderbilt offense operate at its highest level. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, we've seen spurts of really good play, but uh, we need to sustain that. And it doesn't matter who we're playing against. Um, again, our objective is to play at the highest level as a team. And so um, we will focus on them in design, but we will focus on us in execution and and uh, put our best foot forward on, on Saturday. Thank you. Chris Lee, go ahead. Hey, Clark, you moved James Ziegler over to running back in camp just for depth issues. You don't have that many players. I think you've got maybe four scholarship running backs left, including him. Do you move somebody else over to that side of the ball to address your depth there at this point? Um, you know, not not right now. That's not the, the plan. Um, you know, I think we feel good about what we do have there. And um you know, not necessarily looking to to um, to add bodies. Um, you know, Dylan Betts Polly is another player that's that's uh, available to us, and so we'll just um, you know we'll prepare the guys we have. We we should have three good ones um, that have had game reps uh, to this point, and um, you know that that'll be enough for us to do what we need to do. Robbie, go ahead. Uh, Clark, since, you know, most of your staff came from outside the SEC, uh, it, like you actually did face Georgia somewhat recently in 2019. Can you take anything from that game in terms of, um, you know, knowing the type of schemes that you're going against and, and stuff like that? Or is it just at this point, the players and the personnel are so different that it, it kind of is not relevant? They've had a coordinator change on offense since then. Um, and so some, some of the, the schematics will be different. Um, you know, defensively, they've stayed true to who they are. Um, it, you know, there's there's always some some help and familiarity, but in in large part, I mean, college football is about getting your team to line up and to play at its highest level. That's what we have to do, and um, and so we'll spend certainly time on design around who they are, but but um, as much time, particularly for where we are as a program on you know on our people being in good positions and playing at a high level to execute our, our systems. Aria, go ahead. 
Um, you know, obviously, uh, Rocco had some big runs on, um, on Saturday and he'll need to play a bigger role going forward. What have you seen from him? Are you confident that he and um, Patrick Smith can kind of step into that role? Well, whatever Rocco's, you know, um, production has been on game day, Rocco's success is in his consistency in all areas. I mean, he's, uh, he's such a dependable worker. That's been evident since the, you know, early months of my time here. Um, and, uh, he brings energy, he brings attention to detail, he brings effort, he brings a competitive spirit, um, and a work ethic that, uh, that has allowed him to have the success when his number has been called. And so he'll rely on that moving forward as, as a guy that will be obviously featured in our offense. And he was on Saturday and he, and he handled that really well. Um, there were, there was, you know, some good design. There's some excellent blocking up front, but there were also some runs for him on Saturday where he created and, um, you know, that's because he's, he's a good player, um, with Patrick. I mean, you have a, you have a dynamic athleticism. He's shifty. He's, he's, um, he's got explosive playmaking ability and obviously he's got less experience, but, um, but, you know, is equally exciting, exciting to, you know, to watch play. And so, you know, he, he'll get more opportunities now. I'm sure he's really fired up about that. And, you know, I think, uh, it's a chance for us to develop a really good player and, and hopefully for him to have, uh, success as well. So I think there's, there's two, uh, unique styles there and, and, you know, we're, we're anxious to get him out there and see how we can best use him in complimentary fashion to, uh, to help us move the football. Chris Lee, you have another? Hey, Clark, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was in one of these Tuesday sessions, you had talked about sideline energy and demeanor. So excuse me if in the question I botched some of my, what might have been your words, but I think, I think you had said that you had assigned some people to the task of, I think, creating some energy on the sidelines. I don't remember if that was players or coaches or how that broke down, but Give us a little bit more about that and how do you feel about how that's gone so far? And, and if I've said anything in, in the question there that's inaccurate now, I've, I've answered it as opposed to the way it works out. Uh, you know, feel of free. Course. To no, I, I um, that was that was coming out of the East, East Tennessee State game heading into the Colorado State game. We just, you know, we, you, what, what I've what I've learned to this point in, in, in my role is that the more prescriptive I am, the better chance we have to, to become. And so um, the gap that is the unknown for a player that's in a new program that's developing an identity, it's my responsibility to kind of fill that gap and to, and to be specific. And so, um, you know, what we learned in, in week one was that, you know, we needed a higher level of involvement on the sideline. That's both, um, you know, the, the guys that are playing, those are the guys that are awaiting rotation. It's the guys that are reserves so that, you know, they're not necessarily one snap away, but they're there and they're dressed out and then it's the non-dressed. Um, and, and so the, we just made a decision as a program to be prescriptive with roles and responsibility. What part of our energy and enthusiasm, what part of our spirit does each one of those um, positions hold? And, um, and again, that's a work in progress and it's, it's not meant to, you know, like, again, it's, it's, it's more about, you know, filling the gap of the unknown. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So let me, let me be prescriptive to assign a task. And that could be sideline communication. That could be, you know, ownership over our abnormal approach or, you know, the counterbalance to what would be, you know, um, the natural human reaction to, a negative play, right? Where most, you know, most people, when they have a negative play or a negative set of plays where, you know, you feel like momentum's against you, um, instinctively, you go into ego protection. You, you, you put your guard up and you go into a shell while in a competitive environment in a team sport, you know, we can't do that and expect to have success. And so East Tennessee State, there were a lot of guys that were pulling back um, as they experienced the adversity that, playing division one college football presents. Well, we need to have an abnormal approach in that moment um, because as momentum turns against you, 
you know, the, the sooner you can redirect the swing of the pendulum, you know, if you can redirect into a mindset that allows you to go and do the next right thing the right way, you, um, you know, you, 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 you sooner turn the momentum back in your favor. And, and that's the point of all this, the sideline mechanics, the way we communicate, the roles and responsibilities is just to be really prescriptive as we look to build our identity as a program. A year from now, two years from now, it'll be, you know, it is just a part of our process. You know, this is how we do what we do. Um, but until we have enough traction to, to get to that point, you know, my responsibility is to fill those gaps. Aria, you have another? Uh, I, I saw Ben Bresnahan was on the depth chart this week. Is, is he for sure to be back? I, I, to say for sure going to be back, I, he is he is reintroduced into practice and we are going to uh, push him, you know, in, in a return to play sequence. And um, I'm hopeful and I think that he feels good. But, um, you know, we have to we have to get through some some training sessions before we make a decision on his availability. Robbie. Uh, yeah, I, I have the same question about Justin Harris. Also saw that he was on there. It's, uh, same. So Justin um, obviously has had a longer rehab process um, and has already, you know, kind of gone through a return to play sequence. And so him being on the depth chart is indicating that he is now available for, um, you know, full, full contact, full speed. And, you know, whether, you know, is he ready for 80 snaps? I mean, that's, you know, that's not, what's indicated on the depth chart, but he is available. Chris, you got another? I do. Clark, you have rotated sometimes at guards. You have been through a couple of centers. And, and so in the last game, Hernandez started at center, and I think you went with Clemens and Cox most of the way inside. It looked like you got some better running lanes in that one compared to your first two. How did you evaluate that? How did you evaluate those three guys in particular as you looked at film? Well, I was, I was, I mean, you know, pleased with, on the whole, pleased with the push we got. I thought, again, I thought the design was, was there and that's a credit to the offensive staff. Um, and I thought at times the execution was there and I, I felt like we played with a physical edge. Um, and, you know, I, I was, was pleased. I, I think there's just, there's always, you know, and again, the, I, I've said this before, this is kind of the, the illness of a coach is, you know, it's, it's always going to be, so now how do we take the next step? And um, there are some plays that are, that are blocked up sans, you know, one block on the film that would help, you know, get drive momentum going in the second half. You know, how do we sustain performance? How do we remain consistent over the course of four quarters? How do we pull from the reservoir of, energy and effort and physical play that we had in the first half and apply it in the second half. And some of that is game experience too, right? I mean, some of that's, you know, um, learning how to adapt and evolve with the game and, and to sustain over time. But we want to play longer and harder than the opponent, which means we should be open up run lanes in the fourth quarter just as well as the first.